Let me thank our three panelists. Uh, I think uh, that from their outspoken words, everyone must have felt that behind uh, the functional office of a president of our society must be some sort of very strong dedication and hope. And I haven't used the belief, but hope, because uh, I want to quote uh, our President Havel, who defined hope not as a belief in success, but hope is our efforts in what we are persuaded or sure about is worth doing whatever effort we are putting in it. So uh, uh, all the assessments or even critical and outspoken words um, have uh, opened our minds. We now can see that uh, the existence of EST and all the efforts were well, not only uh, of, were well, not always uh, a success. Anyhow, um, I will now give uh, still the floor to our presenters, whether you want to add something or comment on what has been said. No. Okay, so the floor is open, so we'll have a, a student with a microphone, so please put up your hand. And Any questions? My thanks to the past presidents. Uh, I must admit, one of the innovations that the current board brought in was to have a, what are you, an advisory board? To have them on a board so they're there to help us when we need direction and advice. And we have used it with one, uh, one problem we had concerning the Constitution, uh, and it was useful and, uh, uh, and provided orientation. And even more so here, it's, it's extremely valuable to have your comments um, and ideas about where to go in the future. Uh, I, I'll just respond pseudo-officially, but we have discussed these things with the current board and, and make some comments. Uh, firstly, um, on the use of languages, uh, we did discuss this yesterday quite keenly. And we are looking for advice and help. And we've read Professor Snellhobby's comments made after the Granada Conference, which were something of an orientation. At the moment, we have a problem for our Germersheim Conference coming up next year, uh, where German is very clearly an official language. And we're able to provide some interpreting services. So of all the panels that have been accepted, only one is in German. My plea is, if, you know, as an association, as a society, you, you make it possible to use languages, please use them. Uh, the problem is not entirely on our part. It's a problem of people who do have German who prefer to speak English. Uh, personally, I, I would be very pleased if we can get more uh, languages involved in the coming conference in Gammersheim, which promises to be quite a big show. Uh, other minor points, I think, uh, Professor Gilles uh, commented on our um, agreements with other associations. We have many now. Um, we have used them, although not uh, too publicly. Uh, we had a problem with the journal rankings, which you mentioned as well, in the European Science Foundation. You might be aware of the AERI rankings. In 2011, the translation studies journals, some significant ones, were downgraded, including Meta, which is very difficult to understand. Uh, we complained by sending the appropriate letter to the people involved, but that was a coordinated complaint uh, with IATIS, with CATS, and with the Iberian Association. Uh, we certainly talk with each other and decide what to do, should we do it together. In the end, we sent separate letters, feeling this would have uh, be slightly more impressive uh, that there are more uh, people upset with this. It's perhaps a minor political action, but an important one, given, as you pointed out, the increasing importance of impact indexes in our rating. Um, I happen to believe personally that we should be creating quality journals 
that perform well in the big standard indexes for the humanities, the ISO index, uh, rather than, uh, than, than pursue our own bibliometrics, but that's another argument, uh, and this is not the place to bring that up. Something that we've been discussing as well is the convenience of Professor Stell Holmby wants to found another association uh, with a more regional orientation. We are thinking of something that is truly international, based as a federation between the existing associations, uh, the ones you just mentioned, basically. Uh, and that has started. I, on, a, on, a, on a Sunday afternoon a few weeks ago, I created the uh, Translation Studies Federation which exists, it has a website, a blog site, a Facebook site, a Twitter site. It's an afternoon. It has one member, that's me. <laughs> uh, and the idea is to get that going as a base for sharing information. We are very useful and good at sharing information, distributing, distributing information. If we can get that going, if different parts of the world are interested in feeding in and sharing the information, new publications, conferences, activities, if that happens, then there may be a basis for a wider, more substantial kind of union. If not, then not. I think that's the way we proceed with technologies in this world. You see if it works, if it doesn't work, nothing lost. If it does, we may move on to something slightly larger. But thank you very much for the comments. I hope I've responded to just a few of them. Thank you very much. Do you want to react? No. Any questions? Thank you. Actually, I don't have a question, but I have a remark. I would like just to mention that the 30th of September coincides with the International Day of Translation. And maybe EST should be involved in the celebration of that day in a way or another. Is that a question for the present president? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, perhaps uh, Anthony Pame is going to, 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 to say something on that suggestion or <laughs> about <laughs> the International Day. There, there are, there are uh, the coordinated celebrations by translator associations. Um, CATS uh, has put out uh, an important announcement concerning the translation uh, to Jerome's Day, Translation Day. Uh, we are organizing this now because of the, the dates were convenient. And I'm very happy with the party we've had here. Let's say we're sort of close enough to Translation Day for it to do. Thanks. Thank you. Any more or no more questions or suggestions, comments? There have been some suggestions about our future work or orientation. Perhaps that might be interesting. I found Daniel Gilles' comment on, uh, on the network he would like to have for doctoral training. No, what, was it? Yes, mm -hmm. that was what you meant. Uh, quite important, in fact. I think we should um, uh, find ways to like, focus a little more on PhD training and uh, do something about working together. I mean, could that be institutionalized structures or co-supervising, which uh, can be like, done on the spot, depending on the, on the topic of the uh, dissertation and so on. But maybe also try to provide more input and also maybe have a discussion, a workshop on how to design our PhD programs. Uh, that seems to be a very important topic to me, in fact, because we are in Gamma Sam, we are now working on a more structured uh, program. And I think in Austria also, there is this move towards structuring uh, the PhD programs, which is new for Germany, because we had this very loose kind of 
PhD supervision before, and now we are asked to have programs. And uh, it's, it's an interesting transition period, and I, I think it would be nice, for me it would be nice, to have more exchange on uh, how to have this program structured and how we can, uh, I don't know, talk, discuss about the content, about the structure, and uh, about exchange possibilities. Yes. Could I take that up? Um, the idea of doctoral PhDs, um, the trouble really is one of lack of contact. I know that at this institution, I don't know how many doctoral theses, PhD theses are in progress. And um, I've talked about translator training institutions, that's what they used to be. And we were, after um, many weeks of debate in the Rectorat, we changed our name. It was terribly difficult. I think in German time, it's exactly the same. The Center for Translation Studies, das Zentrum für Translationswissenschaft. And um, actually, the, um, there are temporary posts, postdoc posts for um, people working, young people working, and um, an awful lot is going on. But the trouble is the contact seems to be within the institution itself. Or else um, we have our personal contact with other institutions. I, I mentioned Graz simply because I know the people who work in Graz and I know the fantastic work that's done there. And um, this is really something that actually EST could coordinate. And I come back to what I started to say, but couldn't want to finish, that something that really worries me, that um, EST was founded not only for teachers and scholars and journals and so on. Of course, in those days, there weren't that many. And we've got all the um, advantages of technology I, that, that's taken for granted. But the human communication, the human network, um, I think really could be um, increased. And um, what worries me is that you would think that at the institution where EST was founded, there would be a tremendous interest in it. And at the beginning there was, and now I daren't ask uh, really how much interest is there. I can see some of my own uh, PhD students here and so on. But um, I think that with, again, I would appeal to the um, staff, I know that, um, this is not the audience who needs this kind of, I preach it to the converted, I know that. Um, to um, join together and to work together, you could be coordinated by EST if you can get the interest. But there again, um, it means leaving just working about in English. And I, I think I really must say this again. Um, because at this institute, we have 14 working languages. And um, especially Eastern European languages, Balkan languages, and so on. And um, I don't think any of the students I know anything about Esther have the slightest interest, which is a great pity. And, but again, we would need to offer them something. Um, of course, CETRA offers doctoral courses, but at master's level, we could offer something too. And um, this is something that uh, perhaps the S board might like to consider to going out towards the, um, the younger people who are the scholars of the future.